the late night lake show podcast it is your host rj and danny danny we've arrived free agency's over we're here lakers have a roster lakers have a full team how you doing buddy this is the first time i've seen the sun in about three days i've been hiding in my bomb shelter but uh yeah the apocalypse is over and we survived the free agency apocalypse finally what a rough, came and went what a, yeah what a rough week man <laughs> holy Rough, rough is the way you would describe it, eh? Eh, in, in ways, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a little foreshadowing. We're uh, we're at the what we would think is the tail end of the big shock of free agency. Kawhi Leonard has taken his talents to the Staples Center's uh, JV squad with the Los Angeles Clippers. He is not going alone, though. He brought <laughs> Paul George with him. From the Oklahoma City Thunder, who, by the way, still had, you know, four years left on his contract, three years, whatever the hell it is. But we we won't get into that. We will get into, however, the reaction to Kawhi saying no and pretty much using Lakers as the backup plan, as the hometown sweetheart when he goes off to college and knows that he can always go back to them if he wants to. We'll talk about Kawhi using the Lakers as that person. Our main segment, obviously, we're going to get into our additions. Guys, we have a team. Lakers have a full squad of actual NBA talented players. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> Third segment, we'll t- just, you know, take a step back and look at the totality of free agency. Man, there are a lot of names in different places right now. And there was a lot of them that we did not see coming. but. In any event, make sure you guys are following Danny, base underscore Dan. Make sure you're following me, Mr. Ricky Spanish. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast, Late Night Lake Show podcast. We're so happy to have you guys. We're going to dive right into it, Danny. Like I touched on in the beginning, Kawhi Leonard has a new address. He decided to go home, but home was not where a lot of us expected. Kawhi is a clipper. The news broke Saturday night. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, Shams, Chris Haynes, all of them, you know, all at the same time. It's amazing how they all got it, you know, then at the same time that Kawhi Leonard has decided to join the L.A. Clippers. And then two minutes after that, Woj dropped the news that <laughs> the Thunder traded Paul George for literally the entire future of the Los Angeles Clippers. Paul George was... <laughs> oh God, I'm <laughs> reading this haul right now. The Clippers traded the Thunder four unprotected first round picks, one protected first round pick, two pick swaps, Shea Gildress Alexander and Daniel Gallinari. What in the goddamn hell? Now that was something I was not <laughs> expecting. Danny, I've, I've been talking a lot. First of all, where were you when the news broke? And how'd you feel? Walk me through it all. It's funny that you say that. They gave up pretty much, you know, the entire decade of 2020 in picks to the Thunder. But yeah, where I was at. So I'm leaving you know, a little get together. It's me and my cousin. We were just driving. We're like, okay, let's grab something to eat. So we pull to the nearby Jack in the Box, get some food, go back to the house, chill, you know, see what's going on, and then, you know, call it a night. We're in line at Jack in the Box in the drive, and I'm ordering, and I'm pulling up, and all I hear my cousin go, what the fuck? I'm like, what, 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 what happened, bro? What happened? He reads his phone. Or he goes, are you kidding me? I'm like, what, what happened, bro? He goes, Kawhi Leonard signs with the Los Angeles Clippers, and they got Paul George. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Clipper? Paul George? It was like a, such a shock. I'm grabbing my food from the lady at the window. She looks at us like we're crazy, like we're, we're like losing it. And I was, honestly. I'm like, the Clippers, I'm yelling. I'm like, Paul George, how? He's under contract. How did they do that? And I just thought to myself, Jerry West is the GOAT. That's why he's the logo. 
crazy, crazy sequence that it went from they just got Kawhi, then all of a sudden Paul George. We go back to his house and we're just watching Woj on the big screen, just explain it all and how it went down and everything. So that's where I was at. The local Jack in the Box in Turlock, California. That was that's where I was at grabbing some late night food. And that's what happened. <laughs> I don't want to dive too much into your feelings. This is not a therapy session, but how would you describe your emotions at the time? I knew the Clippers wanted him really bad and they ruled him out. And now I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, I'm furious because all these sources lied to us. And I'm, and I'm upset they didn't sign with the Lakers. And we didn't give them a hard enough push and a pitch that didn't work. And then I'm thinking, why, okay, why sign with the Clippers? Just stay in Toronto and be the king of the North and stay there. It's just a whirlwind. It was literally a roller coaster of emotions. I went from sad to pissed to kind of like, okay, what do we do next? To it, it was literally, literally a whirlwind. And to describe it, just confused. Really, really, really confused on <laughs> how this all went down. It was just, it's weird. It was weird. Like Clippers, okay, they rule. He ruled it out uh, apparently to all these sources on Twitter because everybody on Twitter. Ha- is no, no, that's no, 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 that's bullshit. Saying, Kawhi no, didn't I'm say saying, shit. The whole time. I'm saying. But when you read these tweets, oh, he's a definitely ruling out the Clippers. In your head, you're like, hell yeah. You know, he's got two teams. He's either coming home to L.A., he's going to be in the purple and gold. He actually is biting the bullet and wants to play next to LeBron and be someone to help him, you know, establish and finish out his legacy and win a few rings with AD and build that kind of franchise up. But then when you go and sign with the Clippers, he really, really, really wants to compete. I can't say... You know, I'm happy for the guy to pick his choice. Like, I didn't want him there. I wanted him in L.A., you know, and, or Lakers. I'm sorry. There's two L.A. teams in basketball. Mm-hmm. As Apparently. Like, as you like to say, uh, they're not the JV clips anymore. But at the same time, it's like, damn, dude, you really are ruthless, huh? The claw don't play no games, bro. He didn't take shit from nobody throughout this whole process. We'll get into Kawhi being yeah. secret alpha dog in a second. I, I want to share just my setup and where yeah, I was. Yeah, where were you, Ricky? What happened with you? I'm surprised you didn't like lose your phone or throw or break it. I'm surprised you didn't throw it against a wall. Yeah, no. So I was first of all, I was out on Saturday, Saturday evening into the wee hours of Sunday morning. You know, having a good time, enjoying you know life, celebration of another year from one of my friends. It was her birthday. Shout out Tria. And you already know I was on my phone. Everybody that follows me on Twitter already knows that I was probably most active in the Twitter streets this past week, just being locked in, just like every other fan waiting on pins and needles to see the decision. Then I get three tweets, Shams, Woj, somebody else, or maybe Brad Turner, somebody else. Uh, And then I see that I see Los Angeles, right? Now, mind you, I'm a few babitos in, you know, I decided out of all things to drink tequila that night. So I'm a few uh, tequila and squirts in. That was, <laughs> I don't know why I was drinking tequila and squirt, but anyways, so I was feeling good. Then I got the text notifications. Those came in and I was pretty hurt that I saw the Clippers. That was my biggest thing. Like if he would have went back to Toronto, you know, I would have been, ah, and he didn't do, but no, he came to his hometown and then he decided to say, fuck the super team. I am the super team. Uh, we learned a lot about Kawhi these past couple of days, and he has still yet to say one word to us, at least right to the public. But I went from disbelief that he chose the Clippers over the Lakers. Then the Paul George notification came in. Then I was shook. I was yeah, like, I, I almost lost it when he literally, I was that. like, the fuck? Yeah. How, <laughs> how wow. the fuck did Paul George get thrown into this? So then I went into a state of confusion, as you did as well, and trying to piece it together. Then I saw Woj say that it was for a staggering haul, a record setting haul. And yeah. then I was like, OK, well, I'm not really going to focus on that too much anymore. I'm just now looking at. Kawhi and Paul George are sharing the same arena as our Lakers. Man, my mind went straight into competitiveness. My mind went straight into overdrive. I went straight from recruiting Kawhi with every bone matter in my body, every cell I had, talking all types of shit, to instantly, if you're not with us, you're against us, dog. And you said, 
I have no problem being super against all of Lakers Nation. And that's fine, Kawhi. You a boss ass dude for the moves you made. Where Lakers Nation isn't going to forget that you led us on. And Danny, I guess I will, we'll touch on that now. Kawhi Leonard reports came out after he signed with the Clippers that he took meetings with the Lakers during the process in which he was trying to convince Paul George to demand a trade <laughs> to the Clippers from OKC. He, in fact, asked the Lakers two things. First, to possibly push back their completion of the Anthony Davis trade to Saturday or Sunday, this past Saturday or Sunday, so that they could have more time. Ramona Shelbourne reported that their camp didn't give a reason. The Lakers seemed compliant of that. And Kawhi also pushed back the Lakers face-to-face meeting with Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka. Shout out Rob Palenka for being in that room, though, by the way. I pushed back that meeting so that he could actually go and meet with Paul George and go and talk to him some more. Kawhi! <laughs> My guy! <laughs> okay! Right. That's so cold of you. Now, I don't know what was said in those meetings. I doubt he said that he was coming or he gave a commitment of any sort, like all these dumbass sources and people who use them said. I don't think Kawhi made any, you know, indication that he was coming. But damn, to sit in that room and take those meetings and fly six hours to Toronto to take that meeting, knowing damn well you were trying to orchestrate something and you had no interest in coming back to Toronto. Danny, isn't that wild that after all this was said and done, Toronto was last. I, I don't even know if they were a consideration. It was clear one thing that he wanted to go back to the L.A. market. So to lose out on Kawhi, you lost. You lost in that regard. You lost in the Kawhi sweet sets. But now to find out the details in which Kawhi handled this process, I can't be mad at the Lakers. Are you disappointed in how the Lakers went about chasing Kawhi? No, not at all. I think this is the right thing. I remember when we were talking about which free agents you should get, and I said, look, if you're not going to build out the roster with guys like Mariah said, D'Angelo Russell, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera, go after the biggest fish in the sea, right? Go after the most coveted free agent. Push for the hardest thing, because you already have AD and LeBron, or like a star like Jimmy Butler is not going to take that big of a recruitment. If you're going to push for that guy, it's going to be Kawhi Leonard. They did the most appropriate thing. They set up all the meetings. Hell, they even listened to Kawhi Leonard. They gave Kawhi some leverage and rescheduling and pushing back meetings. If that was any other star, they'd be like, okay, next. They actually listened to Kawhi Leonard and made sure that we could take care of you at any type of level. You need help with this? We got you. You want to schedule a certain meeting? We got you. You need this person, this person in the room? Oh, bro, we got you. No worries. So they did all the right things. I think it was kind of this infiltration thing. He gathered all the information he got from the Lakers, kept it in his computer software system that he is, and then distributed that data that he collected to Paul George. And Paul George was like, okay, you know, whatever I got to do to play with you, bro, there it is. The Lakers didn't do anything wrong. What could have done better? I don't know. Because they didn't have the last pitch like how Toronto did. They weren't ruled out like many sources said they were like the Clippers. So the Lakers looked like an easy money, like a free throw at that point. The fact that Kawhi Leonard ended up going to the Clippers, it says a lot about him with the competitive nature of him. That's a cutthroat move, man. That's a cutthroat move. You want to be the king of L.A. You don't want to be next to the so-called king in Kawhi's eyes, right? He wants to be the king of L.A. He wants to be the king of the NBA. Kawhi Leonard is the ultimate power shift right now in the NBA. If he would have stayed in Toronto, the East would have had more of a, a balance and would have been more of – actually, Toronto probably would have came out of the East anyway with Kawhi there. He goes to L.A. and it's a whole different power shift. Now you're looking at the West like teams 1 through 10, 1 through 11 can all win 45, 46 plus games. It's amazing. It's amazing what one player can do, to be honest. I'm I'm bouncing back and forth between giving Kawhi his props for honestly. I give him props. How, I give him how props. he played he, he the finessed. Lakers. He finessed. He finessed he a finesse kid. He did what everyone thinks LeBron does. Right. You know, right. He did. He did the the so called classic LeBron move. Let me build you up to tear you down. Kawhi just took down an entire country with Canada on that point. And a United States state in Oklahoma. He took down a state as well. 
he literally disrupted the whole league and made it a different style looking league with the teams. One player, one guy. And it wasn't LeBron James. It's Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard did this. Not anybody else. I, I, I feel like it was more of an impact that Kawhi is going to the Clips than the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis at this point. That's how big of a move it seems to be like. No disrespect to Anthony Davis. He's a top six player in the league, top five player, whatever you want to call it, five to six. But I feel like the impact and the power shift didn't seem as strong. But when Kawhi did it, it was just like the whole pendulum swung, man. It was crazy. Crazy what one man just did. We'll talk about the Lakers additions going into the next segment. But I I want to just touch on one thing. Kawhi. This is Ricky. I understand why you did what you did. You look LeBron in the eyes. You don't look up to him. I don't think you look down to him either. Kawhi. We had some other shit we could have been doing, but I understand that you needed the Lakers for leverage with Toronto for leverage (laughs) to get Paul George up out of OKC. Kawhi, I understand that the Lakers were probably your second option if Jerry West and company couldn't make that trade with the Thunder and Sam Presti. But Kawhi Leonard, what I do want to make perfectly clear, dog, is you decided to not only reject Lakers Nation, you threw up two middle fingers to him and then went and got another dude who rejected Lakers Nation. Danny, you're in the state of California. I'm not. So I won't speak on battle for Los Angeles, battle for, you know, territorial things in which I cannot claim any ownership of what I can say. Oh, is we own that ass all year. My brother, them cornrows ain't popping no more. We at that head. Every time you miss a shot that what it do, baby, every L you take to the Lakers. We on that head. Literally Kawhi dog. I will never come at your talent. Come at your mentality Come at your skill. But the joke's about to fly, you little cornball ass motherfucker. The Los Angeles Lakers are the creme de la creme. And you literally said, I'm going to go and work for the sanitation department. If there's any sanitation department employees. No disrespect intended. But Kawhi, my guy, you ain't my guy no more. And I bet there's about... 500 million Lakers fans made that number up that feel the same way. So I just want to leave you with these words as you go and create your dynamic duo with Paul one shoulder, George, I pray that you stay healthy all year. And I pray that you drive the lane cross, probably Caruso's ass over. (laughs) Poor guy come into the paint and you see seven foot Anthony Davis and six eleven DeMarcus Cousins and I hope Boogie puts you on your ass and we'll leave it at that. God, we'll be right back. Vendetta. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You have been listening to the Late Night Lake Show and you thought to yourself, man, I love me some Ricky and Danny. This podcast is the truth. I think I could do a podcast of my own. Talk about some of my favorite topics like, you know, like cat litter and stuff like that. Well, that was a bad example, but if you have something to talk about, do it on Anchor. It's your one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your podcast. And best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And right now, Anchor's going to match you up with some great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. Your podcast, my guy. Make it happen. Just make sure you're doing it on Anchor. Free, easy, and it's the reason why I'm reading you this ad right now. And we're back with the uh, Late Night Lake Show. I'm just, I'm just trying to cool down, Ricky. Went on a little uh, tidbit tangent over there. On the last segment, Ricky, you good? Feeling okay, brother? Rick? Oh, I'm Gucci. We're, Lakers we're, got a team. I'm Gucci. Okay. 
Okay. I just, you know, oh, like I got, said, yeah, yeah, I wasn't trying to get, you know, too excitable. Just had to yeah. let the man know where we stood as a nation. Of course. Of course. Uh, Ricky, as you mentioned, though, we got a team now. We got a team. We got the team we were supposed to get last season with the pieces we were supposed to have in place last season. But this offseason, we made those moves. Ricky, first and foremost, biggest signing of the Lakers and most impactful signing. And second, what did you think of Rob Polinka's bounce back game? Biggest signing of this offseason. First of all, shout out Chicago boy AD coming to Los Angeles saying, I want to be a Laker. I want to rock the purple and gold. I want to hoop with LeBron James. Let's just give a moment to shout out Anthony Davis. I think I'm going to splice him into our, our intro. He wants to be next up in greatness. So shout out UAD. Besides him, most important, I'm sorry, you said most important, most impactful? Most important, most impactful signing that we had post Kawhi. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, man. I am very, very, very high. Actually, before we go into that, Danny, let's just go through. Let's go through the Lakers signings. Who did the Lakers oh, add this offseason? So we had $32 million to play with since we didn't get Kawhi Leonard. So we filled it out really quickly. First, we got Danny Green, two years, $30 million contract. So that's 15 a year. Next, we did sign dun, 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 DeMarcus Cousins, one year, $3.5 million. Quinn Cook, two years, $6 million. And then we brought in pieces like KCP for two years, 16. Then we brought back Rajon Rondo and JaVale McGee from last season's team. So some continuity there and a little bit of the chemistry flowing through some of the pieces there. And then we brought back, I believe we brought back Alex Caruso, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. The, the ball headed God is on, is on his way back. And now we're looking at a few other options, potentially a buyout with Andre Godala, maybe a Kyle Korver signing. You say Quinn sign- Cook? Yeah. Two years, six million. Yeah. You say uh, Jared Dudley, old ass. Oh, Jared Dudley, one year, 3.5, I believe. No, no, no. That's not what I said. I said, did you say Jared Dudley, old ass? No, I didn't. Okay. All right. My bad. <laughs> so we'll just, just make sure to add that anytime we reference Jared Dudley. Like, Jesus Christ. If I had to complain about one thing this offseason, it wouldn't be Kawhi Leonard. Is that we went and got and went and signed Jared goddamn Dudley. I'm not even talking about encore production. I guess that's all that should matter. But this is the Late Night Lake Show, and we like to dive into other subjects at hand. Jared Dudley, my brother, we ain't forget. You had some choice words a few times talking about our GOAT, the Black Mamba, especially towards the end of his career. It's so funny that people started to ramp up the shit talking as the injuries started piling up for Kobe. Jerry Dudley, we didn't forget that you said nobody wanted to play with Kobe and nobody wanted to come to the Lakers. I don't care if that was 100% true. We don't forget that. We need to know if you can be trusted. No, I I mean, these words will never reach Jared Dudley. But, bruh, how you going to talk shit about a legend and then come and join his team? Anyways, continue, Danny. I'm sorry. So with all the signings that we went through and the potential buyouts we might get, like I said, Ricky, who is the most impactful signing since we did not obtain? Well, Jared Dudley players? impacted my life. I'll oh say that. God. All right, my bad. My oh, bad. my God. Okay, enough of Jared Dudley and his old ass. All right. Who is the most impactful signing the Lakers went with this offseason? Not named Anthony Davis and not named Kawhi Leonard, obviously, for those reasons. But from all the signings we had, who was the most impactful and most important to you? Yeah, somebody that was 100% tied to where Kawhi Leonard was going to end up, Danny Green. I really like him from the standpoint of checking the boxes of being the 3 and D guy. You know, this is probably towards the tail end of when he's going to be most productive as an NBA player, but he's on a two-year deal, right? So he had a lot of competition, or the Lakers had a lot of competition for his services with Dallas. They were offering on an average salary of $12 million over three years, Like you said, we'll give you 15 for two. I think that he plugs right in as the shooting guard that the Lakers would need. Like you said in the beginning of this segment, Danny, the Lakers went in, acquired and gathered a roster that we were low key looking for last year. But whatever. I mean, I was a little stuck, conflicted between Danny Green and DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins only signed for one year, but I mean, the boy is a perennial all-star. I hope 
And we all hope as Lakers fans for health to the utmost in that he has fully recovered from his Achilles and his quad injury. But if we can get 70% to Marcus Cousins, Danny, the Lakers start to be kind of unfair once you get into the paint. Nobody remembers AD and Boogie, their time together in New Orleans. Y- y'all forgot that? Y'all forget YouTube is free. Yeah. Like it's 29. Like I don't, I don't get people. It's not like Boogie was crossing everybody over in the league and blowing past them. Boogie was a mass equation. He was bigger and more skilled than the goddamn uh, Frankensteins that he went up against. And then who's going to guard AD if Boogie's down there dominating your best defensive big man? So I think DeMarcus Cousins has the opportunity to easily, 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 easily be the most impactful. But in the big picture with Kawhi Leonard saying no to the Lakers, Danny Green, especially at that number, they might have overpaid just a little bit, but you have to do what you have to do, ended up being the most important signing because Lakers played the long game in waiting for the Kawhi answer. And you know, when you looked around after that, it was kind of bare in the cupboards. But I'll ask you the same question. What was most important and which one do you think is going to be most impactful? For me, I, obviously, I could just say Danny Green just like you, but for this sake, um, I will say DeMarcus Cousins, to be completely honest with you, because we did re-sign JaVale McGee, who was a very, very vital option last year when he was playing starting. He averaged 12 points a game, a career high. He was getting fed the ball from Rondo, from Lonzo, from LeBron. So easy feeds and easy targets, and he's catching and dunking. I'm, I expect the same, and I expect him to be a, a defensive force as well. I believe he averaged nearly two blocks a game last year, but DeMarcus Cousins, the reason why... I- that is most important because when he does start or when he does get into the game, you saw it in the finals. The dude came off quad surgery and in game three of the finals showed the all around package of what he can do. He can shoot it from the block, post you up, body you, create double teams, pass out. And he's got great passing, but he's one of the best passing big men in the league rebounding. He could do it all. The only thing I would say is kind of slow footed right now, but if he gets into the shape that he was, hopefully, hopefully, like you said, 70, I'm hoping for about an 85% boogie. The Kentucky brothers are back. The Wildcat bros are back. The Los Angeles Pelicans front court. When you bring back AD and boogie, it's going to be fun to watch. And if he stays healthy and he's given him viable minutes in the second unit, and then when he does come in and start, he literally is a force to be with. Don't forget, guys, he is someone who can actually come out and stretch the floor and hit threes. He's got a nice-looking shot from three. Did we all forget that? He has a pretty good touch around the shooting as well. I think he's the most impactful signing we have at a cheap deal of three and a half mil for one year. It was such a no-brainer at that point. And when he does play with high level and superstars, you saw what he can do playing with AD, playing with the Warriors. So when he has that motivation and the motor, playing with guys who want to win championships and to motivate him, he's going to be, he's going to be nice. I, I really think he's going to be the most impactful person we sign. obviously besides like how you said, Danny Green, but I say DeMarcus Cousins. Do you think he's going to start or is Boogie going to come off the bench? It's him or Jabel? For the first half of the season, at least the first 25 games, I'm going to say McGee's coming or starting just because that second unit, you want to have some kind of firepower and punch and number two, because you want to ease Boogie back in. He's a big guy. He just came off. The quad injury from game two versus the Clippers in the first round. And then he came off in Achilles the year before. That's two big injuries for a guy at his size. I mean, his weight. I'm pretty sure he's going to be working his ass off in the offseason to drop a few pounds so that he can be more mobile. Because the way the Lakers like to play, especially with LeBron running up and down the court, you got Rondo bringing it up and running, feeding him the ball nicely. So I think he's going to be someone later on in the year that starts because then the Lakers will be like, okay, he's ready to go. He's got the shape. And he could do it all. So I say the first 25 games, McGee's going to start. And if he continues to do well and, the, and everything's flowing, you don't want to fix what's not broken. So it could be 25 to 30 games that McGee starts. If Boogie's healthy, I'm going oh, to Boogie, say oh, if Boogie's starting. You think from, from tip off game one in October, he's just going to start? See, so there's this notion going around. Well, not, not really notion. There's this thinking that if they are potentially the best fit in that lineup. They're automatically going to start. Like I see this a lot with Caruso on Twitter that, Oh, Caruso could start. He's the best 
advanced analytics, non-advanced oh, analytics, eyeball test, point guard for the Lakers right now. He's better than Rondo. He should be starting over Quinn Cook. And I just say to that, guys, you know that's not going to be the case. You know Rajon Rondo or Quinn Cook is going to start. You know Alex Caruso is going to be the third guard. You know that if DeMarcus Cousins is healthy, he starts over JaVale McGee. I don't want to say that's because of ego, but I say it's because of, uh, let's just use the word, clout. They have the clout to start at that position. You can argue with yourself about who deserves to start at that position. There was a reason why old boy Luke was like, oh, it's going to be a battle for the starting point guard position between Rondo and, and Lonzo. And for the summer league, like Rondo, Lonzo, what, game off the bench for a couple of them? Or yep. they started together? We have Frank Vogel, but let's just be honest. This is a star-driven league. Boogie's star shines a hell of a lot brighter than McGee's. If Boogie's healthy, he's already better than McGee if they're both healthy. He's going to start, same with Rondo, unless they're not going with the point guard, right? Unless they're saying LeBron's going to be the point guard, and then we're just going to go with a 6-6 six, six and up lineup. <laughs> Let's just uh, let's go through the Lakers roster or Lakers starting lineup real quick. My prediction for the Lakers starting lineup would be my prediction for what it's going to be, not what I want it to be, is Rajon Rondo, Danny Green, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins. That's what I think is going to start the game one of the NBA season. Does that sound crazy to you, Danny, or can you see that happening? I can see that happening, definitely, but... There's two things I wanted to point out. You're absolutely right when it comes to the whole Caruso thing, like what you mentioned. Okay, analytics say this, Twitter says this, that he might be the best fit. But what meaningful games has Alex Caruso played? I just want to know. Can I, can you answer that? I'm not disrespecting Alex Caruso. I think he's a great player to have on your bench, and he's a great backup guard. He does everything right. He's not a bad player. But what meaningful games has he played in? I mean, can you name one? the Lakers haven't been competitive, so zero. Well. Not that I'm saying high, even high level, man. Like you don't start Alex Caruso against the Warriors last year. Like, I mean, Alex you know, Caruso's I mean, played decent but, minutes but against saying, really but, good but teams. Saying, but I'm saying this: when it comes to even playoff time, are you going to have Rondo start or Alex Caruso? Me, I'm I'm having Alex Caruso play more minutes yeah. than Rondo. But the notion of starting. There'd probably be more bullshit I have to deal with if I'm starting Caruso over Rondo. Like I'm starting. I, like I'm here's starting my Ron, thing. I'm starting I'm, Rondo a thousand percent. Like can we agree on? Do you done. think the rotation like Caruso's a third yeah, point guard in that yeah. rotation? Yes, absolutely. Yes, that's why we brought him back. If we didn't believe in his talents and what he could do, we wouldn't bring him back. No, my There's, point being that he's not oh, the gonna, first or second. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I agree with. I agree with you there. Yes. But anyway, but but what I was going to say, I'm sorry to get into this, besides the Rondo thing, starting lineup opening for me, I would say it's going to be Rondo green. And then it's going to be LeBron at the three, AD at the four, McGee at the five. So very similar, just swap cousins with McGee. Another potential lineup I was thinking that could potentially start because of the way the NBA is uh, with the whole small ball thing is you go Rondo green, Kuz, LeBron, AD at the five. And that was one lineup I was thinking as well. Rondo, Green, Kuz, LeBron, AD. Yeah, I mean, that's another good lineup, right? I just don't know how eager LeBron is to be slotted at the four so much, especially with Boogie and McGee on the roster. I think in LeBron's mind, he's still going to be three. In a mm-hmm. lineup, and then yep. he's still going to play a definitive, excuse me, he's going to play a finite number of minutes as a four or five. The Lakers went and traded for and signed two high level NBA players that are, <laughs> to lack of a better term, a lot bigger than LeBron. Mm-hmm. LeBron doesn't have to play big boy as much as he even did last year, right? But I think you want to keep LeBron off of bigger bodies as long 
into the season as possible. I think we see the similar things that we did last year where they started playing them, you know, four and five more towards the end of the year or not towards the end of the year, towards this, you know, later on in the season. We'll see, right? I'm just excited to have some interior offense that wasn't as exciting as Visa Zubat with his, you know, his hook shots and his repertoire moves that he was a little bit too timid to break out. DeMarcus Cousins plays bully ball. I like bully ball. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know yeah. I'm a Julius Randle fan. So am to this day. We'll get into him and his bag securing later on. But I'm a big fan of big people imposing their will on smaller people in basketball, not in real life. <laughs> We're all equal. <laughs> So I'm excited for Boogie. I'm excited for AD, man. Like AD, we had our overreaction podcast freaking out about him. But like I said, I'm sure all Lakers fans have watched the videos. Go watch the defensive videos. Dude covers so much space and he's so athletic, man. I'm trying to think of the name of what I want their interior post defense to be. It's not like Boogie's a well-known defensive player, but he's just really looking at size. Yeah, he's it's just gonna be hard bro. for the little itsy bitsy teeny weenies, the itsy bitsy spiders to come down the lane. Steph, KD ain't around no more, baby boy. You come off the three point line, there are large individuals that would like nothing more but to lock down on you. <laughs> um, like you think of like the Dane Lillards, the smaller athletes that live at the three point line. Frank Vogel's job, in my opinion you know, it gets a little bit easier or it gets a lot easier when you have one, the length that the Lakers do and two, a lockdown post defender in Anthony Davis. Buckets should be hard to come by with this unit, but I digress. Danny, is there anyone still out there? How, how do you, how are you feeling about the Quinn Cook signing? Obviously we bounced him around a little bit. He'll be the second guard off the bench. I think we can agree on that. I think Quinn second Cook point guard. is very, very solid. Yeah, yeah. He's very, very solid to come off the bench. I mean, he's played in big-time games. This is the kind of signing you want. He's played in the M- multiple NBA Finals. He's hit big shots before. He's learned the craft of a point guard playing behind a guy like Steph Curry and being coached by Steve Kerr. And now the transition to play with a guy like LeBron and, of course, AD. It's going to open up his game a little more, give him some confidence when he's in with those guys. So he can hit the three. He tries hard on defense. Typical Duke basketball player, you know. His creative ability, I mean... He's not like a dimer, I would say, like maybe a guy like Rondo, but he can play pick and roll really nicely. He can do the little things that are great for a backup guard. And I like the signing. I like the value of what we got out of him. Two years, six, three a year. Pretty solid. I honestly think it was a good signing. We got two guys who just came off an NBA finals. That is amazing. That is great right there. Danny Green and Quinn Cook, both playing pivotal minutes. Important minutes, too. And that's what I'm saying. It's not like no disrespect. Once again, I, I don't like disrespect NBA players because they have something that you and I don't. They play in the NBA. Like Pat McCaw, Quinn Cook played more minutes than Pat McCaw. <laughs> Danny Pat Green McCaw. played more. Yeah, three Shout times champ, Pat, Pat McCaw. McCaw. Three Pete, Pat McCaw. <laughs> but Danny Green and Quinn Cook played more valuable minutes than him. It, it's not like that kind of signing off a championship team. These are guys who played big minutes, hit big shots, and were very, very, very crucial players to their teams in different respective ways. Agreed. Too early for a seeding prediction, Danny? No, not at all. Where are you putting our Lakers at? I was actually riding all the teams in the West down um, like the next day, post Kawhi signing everything. Shout out writing things down. People don't yeah. write down anymore. I know, right? It's, everything's on the phone or whatever. I actually put the Lakers... As high as three and as low as five. Who do you have potentially above them? Uh, Ricky, do you value our friendship? Jesus Christ. Do you value our friendship? Danny, this is this is why you respect me enough. Danger zone on Twitter. Do you you know what? (laughs) Do you value our friendship? Who you got above them, dog? Utah and the Clippers. So we just drinking the the goddamn Kool-Aid on both these squads. Okay. Okay, I'm not saying that they're not going to be good. I'm not saying that it was bad. Like, I have the Lakers as high as three, one, fuck you, man, and (laughs) as low as five. Like, I think the West is as competitive as it's ever been. This is what everybody wanted. League parity. I want everybody to have an opportunity for as much pushback as people have 
for participation trophies and stuff being equal and everybody getting a medal. As much hate as that gets, people sure have been bitching for equality in the NBA. I just want everybody to have a chance. Why can't it be more like football? Sorry, how many division titles, how many conference titles do the Patriots have? How many Super Bowls do they have? Too many. What parody are you talking about? Are you talking about the teams that eventually lose to the Patriots? Is that is that the parody you talk about in the NFL? <laughs> like, get re- like, no, now we're talking about basketball. Seven franchises have won a championship in this since 2010. In this decade. Shout what the 20- hell are you talking about? You're sick of seeing LeBron. You're sick of seeing back in the day, Kobe always in the final. You're sick of the same faces. You don't want parody. You just didn't want to see LeBron anymore. You just didn't want to see Steph and KD anymore. Just call a spade a spade. KD went to the Nets. Nets three Pete. Are you going to bitch again about parody? <laughs> the New Orleans Pelicans win six championships in a row. You going to bitch again about parody? That's a small market team doing their thing. What if Kawhi stayed? And what if OKC actually pulled off that trade to trying to trade Russell's Brussels and Paul George to the That's Raptors right. for literally the GDP of Canada and the Toronto Raptors win back to back to back with Kawhi Leonard, four out of six championships. You're going to bitch again then too. You want parity unless it's your team. We know. We understand. We get it. Speaking of parity. Let's take our last break, Danny. Let's <laughs> let's do a quick segment looking around at the league because I'm going to need a map, a compass, watching these games this year, trying to figure out who's on what team. Ooh, Jesus. A lot, of, a lot of new faces. or Yeah, a lot of old faces and new places, actually, I should say. Yeah. Late Night Lake Show. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we're back. Uh, just taking a look around the NBA a lot of stuff has gone down, a lot of movement, a lot of things that's shaken out. We talked about the Lakers. We talked about what's looking like the arch rivals now in the Clippers. Daddy, I just want to start at how the hell is D'Angelo Russell a Golden State Warrior? What are, what are your nice, thoughts on that? Man, Bob Myers pulled a nice move, a really good bounce back move. That was that's better than Rob Polinka's bounce back, in my opinion. I mean, you lose KD, you got Clay out pretty much the regular season. You go on to a pool of sign and trade to get the star of the Brooklyn Nets, who was D'Angelo Russell, get him to sign the max with Golden State. And I heard that Golden State, when they offered him the max, D'Angelo Russell didn't even blink. He said, Let's do it. I'm not even I'm gonna cancel all my meetings or everything else. Pen on the paper. Let's get that rolling. I like the move. I think D'Angelo Russell fits well because of his scoring and spreading of the base because he hit the three. Good creator, and he can work on the ball while Steph Curry, who's an amazing off-ball catch and shoot, and he can run. He's going to fit seamlessly until Clay gets back, and then they can run like a three-guard lineup, which is going to be pretty nasty. So I, I like the fit. I like the move that they made to get D'Angelo Russell. Did I want him in, in the Lakers? Of course, I want him in the Lakers uniform. I am kind of high off D'Angelo Russell because I, I think he did improve drastically. It doesn't like irritate your spirit that no, Milo mean, is a warrior. No, no, because I mean, it doesn't disrupt your no, your chi. No, no, not at all. If it wasn't a sign and trade, because he he pretty much got he went there because it was a sign and trade. That's why. I mean, if he just flat out said, "Hey, I'm choosing the Warriors," I would have been like, "Wow, what the hell!" But pulling off the sign and trade was a was a genius move on account of Bob Myers. I'm not gonna lie, I had one of those weird feelings. You know, when you're on the roller coaster. And you you just start that first drop and your stomach's all up in your esophagus. Yeah. That's how I felt when I saw that Bob Myers did that. I mean, shout out him again. I am not a hater. I do not hate on anyone making the best decisions for them and what they care about. I will, though, talk shit. But I think you could talk shit without being a hater. Don't ask me how. But shout out Bob Myers. I do not like that. Immediately they were like, well, we're going to, you know, Mark Stein came out and said, it's only a matter of time before they flip D'Angelo Russell. I was like, damn. Yeah, like that. <laughs> did, did anyone tell D'Angelo that? But I, again, it's not like he had um, had a whole lot of a choice as a restricted free agent. 
It just was really weird as all of this weird ass offseason unfolded to see him end up in the Bay Area. I think him and Steph will make to be one of the best offensive, worst defensive backcourts in the league. Literally (laughs) think they will be on polar opposites on both sides. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. You know, the duos of two guards, you know, CJ small forward, but, you know, the duos of smaller players are going to literally eat their ass up for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I mean, shit. I mean, but when you look around the league, right, who's left like that? You have CP3 in Harden. <laughs> Wall and Beal. You can't count John Wall. He's not applicable right now. You know, he's still out. Wow. No, John Wall is the NBA equivalent of dead until next season, like after this season. I know he tore his Achilles, but isn't he coming back? John Wall is going to be out for a very long time. I don't know if he's expected to be back at any point this year, but you take fast guy, torn Achilles, probably not as fast. You know, <laughs> Okay. Just, just looking around the league. If there are good guards out there, they're probably looking their chops, looking at Golden State, who have now dipped down to being, you know, a playoff team. They are a playoff team. Steve Kerr is still an amazing coach. Steph Curry is still an amazing guard. Klay Thompson, he's a freak of nature. I expect him to come back, honestly, quicker than what everyone expects, right? But outside of that, you got to hope D'Lo builds off of last year, and that's not his ceiling. My man still dealt with some injuries last year. He wasn't Mm -hmm. extremely healthy. He wasn't, to be honest, the best player on the Nets last year. So we'll see how he works out with that team and that culture. Jimmy Buckets. You talk about a man that just, he dances to the beat of his own drum or walks to the beat of his own drum. I don't know what the hell the saying is. He does that because he don't care. I thought it was a typo. I didn't know if I was like imagining it, but I literally saw him quote tweet Chad Onchocinco when Chad Onchocinco asked him when's the last time, next time he's going to get beat down in FIFA. Jimmy says, as soon as I come down and sign my contract, I'm going to bust you in FIFA. This was like, you know, right in the middle of free agency just starting and Jimmy is saying that he's going to go to a team with no cap space. <laughs> so that was something. Shout out him for literally wedging himself into Miami. They will be good for, I don't know, the sixth seed next year. Uh, I mean, they seed. Uh, uh, I don't think they're a top four team in the West who's, at I all. Mean, you got Drogic, Butler, Justice Winslow. Weird team. That team's weird. Who else they got? They got, oh, they trade. They got Myers Leonard. They traded Whiteside. God, who else do they have? They traded Josh Richardson, who I really like. I think he's a great three and D player. Very athletic. He went to the Sixers because of the sign and trade deal for Butler. I think they got their eyes on Brussels. Brussels. I do. You really think they're going to get Russell Westbrook? I do. I mean, at least I don't know how it's going to work out like on the court, but I definitely want it. Like that would be dope. (laughs) Jimmy and Russ in South Beach. That makes the Miami franchise that much more, you know, entertaining to watch. Like I'm all about, here's where I am as an NBA fan. Who's playing on Christmas? Those are the teams I want the best players on. There's a couple of teams that you can pencil in that good or bad are going to play on Christmas. Lakers and the Celtics. For the most part, you mostly see, you see the Bulls, you see the Knicks, right? Then it's whoever has the top superstars. But you know, like I know, the NBA loves nothing more to promote those big market teams and big market cities and having the star players. I think the Heat, hey, you put out those Miami Vice jerseys like you did. I want you on every national televised game, which they retired. But y'all can build off that. I hope the Heat build off the Jimmy Butler signing and go and get Russell Westbrook just so that can be dysfunction and entertainment down in South Beach. Who else we got, Danny? Who else made a, a wild Ke- uh, transition? Kemba! Uh, Kemba Walker. Kemba oh, my Walker. God. Kemba, my brother. We touched on a little bit last episode, but man, ugh. Boston will yeah. be good. They'll be good. Yeah, they'll be top three, top four in the East. I, I said They'll be before, top eight in the East. <laughs> I said this before. He is a less a lesser version of Kyrie in his shot-making ability from three, but it has all the handles, can finish well, and I honestly think he's a better overall teammate than Kyrie. 
has a better spirit than Kyrie. I think he just brings a better overall demeanor and vibe than Kyrie Irving does to Boston. You know, I think they're going to finish top three to five, probably fourth, maybe third uh, in the East. And Kemba, man, you, you got the max, but you didn't get the super duper max that you could have gotten Charlotte, buddy. No, we couldn't have. Jordan said no. <laughs> oh, my God. I was going to say, if they didn't even offer him 200 mil, I would have been dipping quick. He didn't even hesitate. He just went to Boston. I mean, I would never just dip to Boston, but I'm trying to think, like, if we thought about this totality on Kemba Walker's options, right? If you if he played it realistically, he knew that the Lakers needed a point guard, but the Lakers were going to be focused on Kawhi Leonard. So obviously he didn't want to wait on that. Phoenix needed a point guard that they could assign to the max, but I'm not going to Phoenix under any circumstances. Minnesota needs a point guard, but they didn't have the cap room for it. Boston, obviously, with the departure, needed a point guard. The Nets need a point guard they got a point guard the knicks need everything so kemba could have <laughs> went to the knicks kemba could have went home but kemba wanted to win and i can't be necessarily mad at that kemba made the best decision for his career and his family again i will talk shit about the boston celtics i have no reason to hate you know fuck the celtics and unfortunately now kemba walker gets thrown into that boiling pot but is there uh, any other additions that we're missing, man? Any other weird ones? Nikola yeah, Vucevic, like, he signed back. Like, Who else? I, I there used, was a whole like, lot of signing trades. A whole lot uh, of signing trades. What the hell? Everybody's just so compliant. Yeah. I'm going to help my team what get about, my what, former team. What about like Malcolm Brogdon going to the Pacers and getting a bag? He got That was a surprise. Contract. Chris Middleton getting paid 35 mil a year. God damn. Um, but we knew that I mean, Milwaukee I, had no we, choice. They brought back Brooke Lopez. So they're essentially running back the whole team. Don't forget Robin. Um, and they got Robin Lopez. That's right. And then, oh, yeah, Kevin Durant in the Nets. But that was signing trade. Kyrie, Nets. Al Horford. That was another weird one. Yeah. Oh. All right. Six we'll six. finish with those two then. Kyrie on the Nets, first year without KD. Where do you put them at? What are your Same thoughts? Same spot as last year. Six. Same spot as last year. Se- six, uh, seven? Six. six seed? Six. Six. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I think the team was solid. They had a really solid team. They played defense. All right. Just for the sake of competition, I'm going to put them as a top four seed. Nets will be a four. They might be the four seed. And then Philly. Uh, am I going a little too crazy and saying Philly's the best team in the East? No, because Kawhi's healthy. not there. Uh, actually, I'll still take the Bucks over them. I'll but Milwaukee got kind of got their ass whooped by Toronto. And Toronto went seven games with Philly. I know styles make fights, but I'm pretty sure that Philly would have beaten Milwaukee just based off of what I saw in those two series, you know, individually. Yeah, but who, who do you think was going to guard Giannis? Ben who Smith. guarded Giannis during the Toronto series? Siaka. It was a scheme. Yeah, but I don't I don't know. I, I feel like Milwaukee still has an edge. I mean, they didn't win 60 plus games for no reason. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Milwaukee's good. I mean, we're going down a rabbit hole of uh, hopefully we'll see those two teams. I think it's a good bet to say Milwaukee, Philadelphia are probably going to be the Eastern Conference Finals matchups for the next couple of years. Western Conference Finals matchups. Uh, it's a absolute open field. Lakers could be there. Rockets could be there. Clippers could be there. Jazz could be there. Yeah, that's so and true. Who else could be there? Blazers. Uh, no. Eh, unless all the aforementioned teams I said are all on the same side of the bracket. I don't think the Blazers got better with Hassan fucking Whiteside. <laughs> what about what's it called? The Warriors. So I guess the Warriors are in and Clay's healthy for the playoffs. It doesn't really matter what seed they are necessarily. But I mean, the Warriors are a really, really good team. They were unbeatable with Kevin Durant healthy. The Warriors are now going to go a half a year with D'Angelo Russell and Draymond Green and Steph Curry running the show. And then they're going to add in Klay Thompson. Like, yeah, they'll be in contention, but... If you're telling me the Jazz, Rockets, Lakers are all healthy, you know, I can't see the Warriors. What about the Nuggets? I mean, the Nuggets are going to be good. 
Nuggets are going to be good. I think Jay Williams is smoking crack cocaine for saying that they're going to be the best team in the league and going to win the NBA finals. I think you have to be on special type of prescription medication to think that a team that has one year under their belt of playoff experience whatsoever is going to now go to the finals. Did you not see this year who went to the finals adults, Kawhi Leonard, been there, Danny Green, been there, Patrick McCaw. I'm kidding. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Like, I do yeah. think, like we saw out of the Bucks. I think the Bucks were a, a year or two away. I think Denver's a year or two away, and I still want to see what Denver looks like after this year when Paul Millsap's contract is up. He's a really integral part of this team, and you know, you take one cog out of units that don't have a super, super, superstar. I get it. The Joker is cold, man. He's cold. But that motherfucker is going to get gassed in playoff basketball. So your best player better be around 6'6 and can knock down a jumper from outside. That's all I'm going to say. Joker's cold. Denver's going to be competitive. But in my opinion, it's still a little premature to say that they're going to be the best team in the league. But no, Danny, with that said, this was uh, one of our longer episodes. I'm glad we got to connect. Uh, yeah, Lakers absolutely made it out of free agency with a fortified team. Not saying that it was pretty, not saying that all <laughs> this was done the right way, but I'm saying we have a team that we all can be excited about. Boogie is up for a bounce back year. Man, I'm just hoping that we can come up with a nickname where they just all bullies. LeBron's a bully. AD's a bully. Boogie's a bully. Rondo is a bully. You know what I'm saying? Kuz is starting to get real Hollywood on me. <laughs> he lost it, dude. Like he's a little space cadet now. But we we'll support him. It. We'll support him. We'll support him. Whatever. Well, I, We're not I, I gonna go him. down that path. I Kuz fucking him. dying his hair and now but is bro, drilling Kardashian Jenners. Whatever. To each their own. Lay with who you want to lay with. Just we've seen what it did to Ben Simmons. And it's not like your three point percentage was too caliente last season, but <laughs> It'll be a big bounce back year for you, Mr. Kuzma, and that don't involve having Jenners bouncing on you. Jesus. I think we'll end the show on that now, Danny. Oh, yeah. Please do. <laughs> so, please, take, take us, us out. out. <laughs> Peace. Me and my blood bring another zone, yeah. Get a pop and I can tell you